episode 10. I can't believe that ten. we made it to episode 10. ten. Yay! This is like nine more than I ever envisioned us doing. Congratulations. Next week, ten. we're going to have to start counting episodes on our toes. Toes. Run out of fingers. But what if I'm wearing socks? John, we're going <laughs> to get you those those individual toad socks. You know, the oh, rainbow ones. Those are creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's how. That's I don't how need I'm to see your toes, people. Unless you're playing guitar with your toes, like that one guy on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty Shout sweet. Shout out to that guy. <laughs> I don't Welcome know your up. name, guy, but you, that's John, epic. we haven't even said the title of our, of our podcast of yet. Our, now that we've had 10 episodes. 10 episodes of Sharpen That Axe. That's right. A podcast dedicated to strengthening your skills as a guitar player. I've gotten really good at saying that. Yeah, you have. Thank you. That's good, because it means I don't have to say it. Yeah, man, <laughs> it's been an uphill battle, but here we are, episode 10. So, kicking things off as ever with our Lick of the Week. The week, it's my turn, so I'm going to give you this. You were going all Brad Paisley last week, Yeah, but mine's exactly. something a bit different. Okay. So, this is played on, uh, so before we play this, played up on a electroacoustic guitar. Okay. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, I dig it. <laughs> oh man. So that is the yeah. song Ugly Cherries by the band Power Bottom, who I saw oh, okay. in Dublin not too long ago. It's okay. it's weird. It's just a two piece band. Uh, I think they bring on like a bass player and a drummer for some shows, but mostly it's just the two of them. Yeah, it's a fun lick, man. Yeah, it's great. It's really, really nice. It's just there it's weird because their songs are really talking about being gay in America and what that's like and being kind of pretty flamboyant, but man, they can play. Yeah. There's some real chops there. The guitarist, the lead singer, um, oh, fuck, I can't remember his name, uh, Mr. Powerbottom, uh, <laughs> uh, recently post, he posted a picture on Instagram yesterday of some company have given him his like own Gibson Flying V. Cool. Uh, like, of course, he could pull off the Gibson Flying V. Yeah. The makeup and everything. <laughs> like that. So, yeah, great, great lick. John, yeah, how are you doing lick. this week? Uh, all right, man. All right. Settling into life with... Oh, this degree so that's good we have yeah. the degree yeah we just don't have to do any more work really well there's the thesis apart from well, the thesis but john yeah why don't you tell the listeners what your thesis is on john your academic thesis yeah my academic thesis is basically on on gent like <laughs> for the uninitiated <laughs> though a lot of our listeners will probably know what gent is can yeah. you explain to the uneducated because i'd never heard it before you actually brought it up right so the thing is is like um gent is is really kind of a really broad term it's sort of an umbrella term that gets thrown around a lot um and of course the epic memes right now you can just google but does it gent and gent is spelled d-j-e-n-t correct and so the term comes from the band mashuga and in particular um peripheries guitarist producer Misha Mansour who was just kind of coined the phrase essentially referring to Mashuga saying like it makes this gen 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 sound and um, that's just that sort of arrhythmic palm muted sound like if you think of the sound of a palm muted open string it goes I've never heard that before gen, okay. gen, 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 gen. so um, that's where the term comes from, but it's been r- applied to a very broad spectrum of bands that um, everything from Meshuggah to things like Scale the Summit, who use a lot of clean tones, mm. um, who are less sort of uh, polyrhythmic in their guitar parts and that sort of thing, to huh. bands like Periphery, can be vocal, non-vocal. I'm going to kind of focus on the instrumental side of things. And what are you working on for your fantastic thesis uh father john misty because academia is a sham people (laughs) an absolute (laughs) sham a pool of money yeah that is no longer ours moving on (laughs) swiftly yes with swiftness let's let's go quickly to pedal talk so rather than taking an individual pedal and breaking it down like we have been doing in recent weeks right we are going to talk about signal path now john for the uninitiated Mm. again you are the uh, guitar Yoda. Please don't let's speak about Yoda, like Yoda for the rest of the episode. <laughs> that, that, yeah, I, I, I that don't think I would, could do that. That crap would get old. Yeah, fast. exactly. Uh, anyway, get old. Yoda. Fast it would. Yes. Uh, so, I can't even what do is the a voice, signal path? So, 
uh, yeah, just simply speaking, the the chain of your effects. So, so the from, running order, essentially. Yeah, from your guitar all the way through to your amp. So um, everything in between. Yeah, exactly. Now, of course, we could get complicated and go to into effects loops. We're not going to do that. So. Um, and of course you can play with this order all you want, but this is kind of the general guidelines. Like when you ask people, this is sort of what they recommend. Okay. So um, what, what is the, the common order of pedals? Yeah. I would, you, first you'll go from your guitar into the most important piece of equipment any musician should have, which would be tuner tuner. Yes, exactly. Now question about that. Yeah. Would the guitar go into the tuner before the wah or would the wah come afterwards? Um, I'm not sure it matters. And there's different different, different ways to do that as well. So, mm. for example, if you have like uh, the standard Ernie Ball VP or VP Junior, mm. um, it has a tuner out on it. So okay. essentially, you just run into the volume pedal and then go to your tuner. Now, some people like if if you've got your wah, um, and we had this discussion a couple of weeks back on whether or not you should have one. Everyone should probably have one. How often you keep it on your pedal board, I think, is that's yeah. a subject to it's debate. Um, but I think you could you could go from your guitar to the wah to the volume pedal in this case, and the new tuner is out, um, mostly because you don't want the volume necessarily to influence the wah. Now, that said, if you're going to keep your volume up on the pedal while you're using the wah, no harm done. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that would be sort of that. That's your front order of things. I think that would be my my take on it. After that, um, you're gonna go into like your compressors. So after your volume pedal, anyway, compressors, uh, equalizers, clean boosts, those sorts of things. That's okay. generally gonna be what comes after that. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, you start getting into your modulation effects. So things like your flangers, your phasers. Um, anything of that sort, maybe a chorus, okay. vibrato. That's typ chorus. typically where those are going to go. Um, and then after that, you'll move into your delays. Okay, but what about your distortion and your overdrive? Oh, right. I totally blew over the distortion and the overdrive. Okay, mm -hmm. so after, let's, let's back that up. Uh, after your compressor, and then your clean boost, I would say that's that's where you're going to put your uh, overdrive. Now you could you could put the clean boost after that as well. Mm -hmm. That's kind of up to you. Um, if you want the clean boost before, which is that's one of the things I like to do because that way when I mash on that, it just pushes that overdrive signal a little bit more. Okay. Um, which can kind of push you into a uh, a more solo oriented mode, or you can put it afterward and you can have it so it boosts that overdrive signal. If that okay. makes sense. Yeah, that makes so sense. there's two ways to think about uh, your boost pedal and where you want that to go. Play around with it, see what works for you. Google, see what your favorite guitar players do, etc. Cool. Um, rig rundowns are pretty big on yeah. the Premier guitar. Yeah. Maybe like rig yeah, yeah. rundowns of famous players, really, really cool. Really that's that's a yeah, that's an excellent place to start. Um, and then from there, you've got like like I said, your modulation effects chorus, flanger, et cetera, um, and then your delays. So once you're kind of into your delays, of course, you can stack those. We talked about it last week. Stacks you know, stacks yeah, if yeah. you've got four of them, you can line them all up right there if you want. Um, and then after that is reverb. Now, uh, I've seen some things where some people kind of debate where you place the reverb. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty well accepted, though, that generally that reverb is going to go after the delay to just kind of create more space for that delay. So, okay, so the echo that you get from the delay is also then put into the reverb and it just kind of expands things. So when you've got both of those on, it just creates this like never ending cascade of sound. <laughs> Hooray. Um, which really just kind of fills that space, creates an, a nice ambiance. Oh my. Yes. Oh my. And then after that, for me, I have a, um, a tremolo after that okay, so cool. um, because then that that effect tends to sort of give a fake perception of of a depth and volume because of of how the effect works um and so i would rather have that um at the end of the signal chain because otherwise it sounds like the delay itself is kind of ducking in and out yeah so at the end of it 
um, it kind of creates, it takes that cascade of sound that you have and then it sort of gives it a little bit of that tremolo effect to it. So, um, and kind of adds to the whole swirling around your head. Gotcha. Effect. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So there you go. That's kind of your basic recommendations for signals. Cool. So just a question about maybe, so say you're going from a, a riff to a solo mm-hmm. and your pet, you've got your pedals in front of you. So say you're maybe using an overdrive. This is a personal question I'm going to ask. Maybe right. other people have uh, things as well. Uh, thoughts on this. Leave is, a comment. <laughs> yeah. Um, wherever comments are left. Uh, so I've got my <laughs> overdrive pedal and then I'm, I want to boost it. Should my boost pedal go right after the overdrive pedal then? I would say so, yeah. Yes, because you're, you're boosting basically everything that has come up until the boost pedal. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. So, and then um, you could, the other thing you could do there too is like if you've got your overdrive pedal off yeah. um, and you just kind of, you need a, a beefier clean tone. Like that's, for example, yeah. my RC booster. Yeah. Like anytime I've got a clean tone, that thing's on no matter what. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So signal path matters. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because if you start mixing that stuff up, um, it can definitely change things. Now, I've mentioned in the past that I put, um, I've been kind of playing around with this idea of placing my uh, overdrive in front of my volume pedal. Oh, you were saying that before, yeah. Yeah, weird. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the idea is like, if I want to be able to swell with that distorted sound or that overdriven sound that's how I'm going to accomplish that particular task and still maintain the rest of the signal and maintain the rest of uh, like the amp sound coming out of it. So um, that's something to play around with. I don't recommend it for everybody, but if it's something you're interested in, if you find you like it, why not? I mean, there's no wrong answers when it comes to this stuff. Yeah, it's but, all trial and error. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but it will affect kind of your overall outcome of the sound you're producing. And you might come up with something cool if you mix it up, or you might come up with something that's complete crap. Yeah. But, you know. You said that there's no wrong way to do things, but I recently, about a year ago, I saw Biffy Clyro, mm-hmm. and I just I didn't like the tone. I don't know what it was doing, because it's, it's a big rock three-piece yeah. band. And he's playing through like a single coil strat, which is a bit okay. And then the dude has like two two boss metal zones. Oh, yeah. okay. So that's right. Maybe, yeah. So so maybe there is a wrong maybe way to do the wrong things. Way. If if it involves a rat or a boss metal zone, then yeah, that might be the wrong way to do things yeah. in general. So, yeah. Be wary. <laughs> be wary. Anyway, uh, for episode 10, we are going to do something a little bit different. We were having an interview, our interview with Colin last two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Went really, really well. So we're going to, we have another interview uh, lined up for you guys today. It's with, uh, he is a guitarist, an author. Uh, He has a book out called Using Your Buzz to Play Guitar. And he's currently based in Cork City. He's from New Zealand originally. Yeah. Uh, And we brought him into the studio, studio with Quotation Quotation fingers. <laughs> and uh, we talked to him about it. So this is Ryan Kershaw, uh, who was very gracious to give us some of his time. So we're here with um, we're here with Ryan Kershaw um, from, you're from New Zealand? John Redmond Street. John Redmond Street. <laughs> <laughs> God, that Cork accent. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Excellent. So, Ryan, who are you and what are you doing here? Uh, yeah, well, I, I'm a muso, primarily. Number one, yeah. So, uh, but I guess the main thing I do is I combine personal growth with music education. All right. Wow. So, um, you know, I've told you before a bit, and you've read my book. Mm-hmm. Um, Use your buzz to play the guitar, which basically uh, comes from a lot of the stuff that went on in my past. You know, with depression and and uh, different well, different challenges in life. Mm. There's a whole list which everyone goes through stuff. But uh, what I ended up doing was turning a lot of those challenges that I faced uh, personally and as a musician into what I do to teach and to help. So basically to help other musicians get through all the crap that can come up. Because as you guys know, you know, there's a lot of it, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and out yeah. and all those, yeah, the, the, all those parts of it. That yeah. come with it. So that's basically what I do. So the, uh, and there's different areas that come into it. Um, time management, confidence is a big one mm. for musicians, uh, songwriting, and then yeah, everything guitar-wise. So yeah, absolutely. It sounds very all-encompassing. Like it's not yeah, just, it's not just it's not technique. It's it's so many. Other no, things well, like you guys are. are, are uh, that's why I love listening to your podcast because 
there's much more to learning an instrument than just sitting down and bodybuilding. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, just... Yeah. 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 Uh, That's certainly a part of it for when you need it, but, I mean, everything else that goes on in your life affects your inspiration, it affects how you're feeling as you compose, Mm -hmm. so it, it makes sense to get those areas a little sorted, or at least expand your knowledge on those areas so you can, you know... Work on the whole thing. God, that sounds great. And, and uh, how has the book been received? Like, how, how good. Yeah, yeah, really good. Yeah, really, um, I really enjoyed reading it. I, I oh, really awesome. When I was working in Mayo Cafe and there was no customers, so it just be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, it, was, it was great. No, it's really cool because I never come across because there's so many guitar instructional book, books out there, but that's it's, it's something different. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Don't know which section of the music shop you'd find it in. <laughs> no, no. Um, and it, it it can be a little tricky describing it to people. Some, I mean. Uh, yeah, I, I guess store owners are a little used to the mainstream or what mm, they've always had. Right. So, yeah, of course. But for the people that have read it, and it's really, it is, there is that gap there. And that's what I noticed as a teacher as well, because as a, as a guitar teacher, I taught over the years people from all walks of life. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, any, from gang members of people that have been in prison going through tough times like that, to um, you know, very straight-laced people that just want to compose more uh, traditionally. To j- just everything is too much to kind of go on yeah, in one yeah, or two yeah. sentences. But um, and so it, it just naturally evolved in my teaching that I w- <laughs> I was talking through the sessions more about you know what's happening in their life and everything and how it's affecting their music. Absolutely. As well as just well, here's a G chord, here's a C chord. Right. So I, I felt there was a need to do that. In in some ways, like teaching can almost be more, uh, just it's it's more relational than it is necessarily just sharing information. Yeah, yeah. You know, Very so, much so. Um, I'm I'm kind of curious. I mean, you start off the book with that first chapter, like how to learn redefining study. Like, talk a little bit about that. Mm-hmm. Talk about this idea of like reconceptualizing what we mean by studying an instrument. Yeah, well, the traditional, I, I guess, viewpoint of looking at study is sitting down. You know, getting a stack of books that you don't necessarily like, <laughs> and uh, right. having to memorize the Mel um, Bay books. What's that? The Mel Bay books. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, no. <laughs> Twenty nine, ninety nine. Yeah. <laughs> Learning Yankee Doodle um, Dandy. Yeah, you know, and just having to memorize these things that are like, well, here's the test we're going to have for everyone. Uh, mm. It's like that cartoon on that you've seen on, you know, about. Um, oh, I can't remember what it was the Einstein quote about we're not all yeah, fish, you know, exactly. learning yeah, country. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, and it's just it's not that not that way. Not everyone right. needs the same things at the same time to pass the same memorized questions on a test. I mean, it's you know. So with with study, it's um, kind of realizing that everyone does study, just mm-hmm. not perhaps not in the traditional way. Right. Mm. So for those that think they don't study, if they just have a think about it, they realize they might have picked some things up from their parents. Mm-hmm. You know, the old ways that they learned or did things. So they're taking things in and they're studying, whether it's in the traditional sense or not, it's another yeah. matter. Yeah. You know? Processing information. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so it just pays to kind of redefine what you think studying is, and then it, it kind of helps unlock that or get rid of that barrier of thinking of study as a bad thing yeah. and, and realizing you can study in your own way. You right. Know? So. Yeah. Mm. That that Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's good. That's yeah. good. That's cool. I like it. I mean, that's that is one of the things like I've had to come across like also as a teacher. Just like study is not a bad thing, but at the same time, realizing that everybody learns a little bit different. Yeah. You know, and so how do how do you help someone to learn in their manner? You know. Yeah, yeah, and and you'll probably notice too. One of the things that you can do is if you actually talk with them and communicate. Right. You find out their likes and what they're into. So if they're into a sport, for example you can relate things like learning technique to a sport. So Absolutely. when you kick a soccer ball, you might use a certain part of your foot to curve the ball in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Um, and you might learn these different techniques so that when you play a game, you can put it all together. Right. And it's the same thing when you're learning the guitar. You might learn the different techniques on their own so you can strengthen them uh, more than just randomly trying to play. Yeah. And then what the song is for is to kind of put those different techniques together as well. So if the person likes... Uh, uh, no, I'm not going to say rugby because the Kiwi thing, but yeah, <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. I <laughs> that's like fine. rugby. That's, that's fine. Like rugby. <laughs> <laughs> but if they do, you know, yeah. they, you you can relate some of those things or sports players or that 
to their learning. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if they like ballet, exactly the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Shared kind of aspects. Mm. Yeah. And of all the, the different topics you cover in your book, which do you think, if you could have to pick, if you could only teach one to a musician, what would it be? So you could take one maybe trick from your... Yeah, there's a, there's a couple, and that's kind Please. of why I'm hesitating. Because, Absolutely. Um, I think the first thing is something that I learned from the speaker and author, Jack Canfield. And he learned it from one of his mentors, but it was basically E plus R equals O. So event plus response equals outcome. Okay. So you can't always control what happens, mm -hmm. but right. you can control your response to it. Yeah, absolutely. Like and that's that. going to affect the outcome at the end. And I think if you, if you always remember that with your learning, mm -hmm. especially if you're trying to pro progress professionally in a career, um, that will help you in the long run because it, it, there's going to be a lot of setbacks that happen so if you're just getting knocked about every single time and just going, you know, getting uh, bashed about by it, that's going to limit how you progress. So I, th I think yeah. that one and, and just taking responsibility. Uh, but w one of the other beneficial things is to zoom in on a technique. So I'll, I'll mention that one because it's more guitar based specifically, Great. not just personal growth stuff. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, there's a, a track on the internet that you can find and it's where I make uh, dolphin and whale sounds with the guitar. Cool. cool. Kind of like sonar mm -hmm. sounds. And that basically, a bit of it was pit slides and stuff, you know. So, <laughs> Always, but, you've got to throw some in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the 80s Van Halen kind of <laughs> How do I make a dolphin sound? <laughs> Through the phaser, yeah. But um, the, the way I was able to do that was because what I used to do a lot was just zoom in on, say, a pick slide. Now, instead of being taught what a pick slide was or, or looking at it and then just doing it, I'd actually sit there for ages and just go, well, what happens if I just do a slow, you know, versus a fast pick slide? Right. And I'd zoom in on that technique. That technique, cool. You know, so then you'd You're notice. Pick sliding as a technique. <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. anything to make sound and express what it is you've got in there. So I noticed that if you do it slow, it kind of sounds almost like a dog barking. And then if you do it, you know, medium pace is like a grinding of a door, obviously. Mm -hmm. But then if you do it uh, fast, it has a totally different sound altogether. Absolutely. Right. And that sometimes for inspiration even, that's enough to spark off an idea because then that, you go, oh, that sounds cool. And that's all you need. You know, mm. it's just playing, always trying to play. I like that. So I think, yeah, zooming into techniques is really beneficial. God, that's yeah, great. That's yeah. cool. And apart from the book, can you tell us about, because I saw you've done workshops around Cork. Yeah, um, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about them? Yeah, so um, the five, five workshops I usually do, uh, one is making a living from music, the second one is songwriting, the third is confidence. Fourth is music organizations that can help you if you're you know, into doing music as a profession. And uh, the last one is time management. So the one I, I did first in Cork was kind of an intro to those, which was creativity and success. And it was really interesting because it was, you know, when I was telling people about it, it was good. But I remember one guy going, oh, no, we, we haven't got stars in our eyes, mate. Mm -hmm. And they totally got the well, I won't say wrong, but a, a different impression of what I actually meant by success. It wasn't wasn't like, uh, you know, uh, buying all this gear and walking around like an idiot saying that you've got lots of money and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. It was actually talking about the different internal conflicts that can come, even just hearing the word success for right. a lot of artists. Yeah. yeah. You know, and how you... has got a different image. Kind of yeah, yeah. Means. Yeah, absolutely. And it was more about combining creativity successfully and what that means and um, so I, I kind of had little samplers of each workshop in there um, and, and mixed it in but it was really good that sounds great yeah, that's yeah. cool very cool I saw like a, a jam that you did maybe towards the end just you and an acoustic guitar kind of shredding away oh, it's really really cool yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's nice that you remember that yeah one. absolutely and um, so what's, what's, what's the next thing for you well I'm, pro I'm looking at doing a songwriting seminar in about eight weeks Cool. So just kind of looking around at venues at the moment and things like that because I've got this other, the single coming out and things. So it's just a matter of timing um, because I'm re releasing my next book, uh, Make Money Teaching Guitar, Oh, <laughs> at, at, the, at the same time. Wow. So so there's a bit going on. So you, it's just a matter of timing everything and yeah. God, that sounds great. So I'm wow. going to need a copy of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, John's been teaching for a really long time. I have started teaching about maybe three months ago and... I remember finishing my first lesson, I was teaching basically basic chords to a taxi driver who was maybe in his 50s and has always wanted to learn. And then he gave me 20 euro at the end and I was like, 
Oh, like, yeah, I, was like, yeah, yeah. I, I was just like buzzing for the rest of the week. So I was like, that was like the easy, like I, that, I didn't even consider that a job or anything like that. It was yeah. just, um, I was like, so now it's just, just a weekly source of income that I'm just, it's a half an hour that I enjoy, you know, something kind of yeah. forward to, yeah. which yeah. is great. So I suppose we've all got different experience of teaching, but I'm still really fresh and I'm loving it. Man. Awesome. It's so great. Yeah. Because you learn so much about yourself, you really have to think about what you're teaching. And yeah, you, yeah, it's, one that's, it's great. And John's been. Yeah, a veteran of the game. You've been exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wicked. No, you learned so much from it. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah that's that's great. Cool, John. Have you any other questions for Ryan? Um. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of curious. Like, talk a little bit more about sort of uh, the mindset for creativity. What happens mm-hmm. when you have like a really crappy? Yeah, day, I was gonna ask. About you know, that. and you, and then you have to go into the recording studio. Like, how do you how do you face that challenge, and how do you recommend other people do? Okay, it, it totally depends on the situation. So there's, like with everything, there's not a one key fits all. Mm. Um, I, for me, going in, specifically going into the recording studio, yeah. it kind of gets me out of that. That's my one thing that's really, you know, okay. most time. So I actually... You just leave it at the door. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I, I actually had a, a disagreement with someone, as happens, you know, uh, close to me in the, during the last recording. Mm. This, this was only last week or okay. whatever. So it, it could have affected me a little bit. But yeah. I, I guess after a while, and having studied the personal growth and, and doing a lot of work on myself, I knew that a lot of the times when these things come up, especially if it's with someone else, mm-hmm. just stepping back and giving it time or giving yourself time to actually just simmer down or get into whatever you're doing, right? not get wound up... Uh, emotionally or about being right mm. and then doing what you need to do and just playing music and then maybe coming back to it and you know reassessing it a bit with a level head um, and just stepping back and looking at where you are I mean even with something uh, with I mean with your studies mm-hmm. you could come to this place every day and just get sick of it and not really realize the beautiful old windows that are there or just the, the fact that you're in a, wait, wait, a place this room has learning. windows <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're, we're in the last last week of a, of a uh, I don't want to use the word grueling but uh, yeah, intense no, it has so, been, so that's, it has that's the perfect time because yeah. you're at that stage where it's just like fuck you know you're, you're tired everything's going on uh, that's the perfect time to stop and actually sorry and just stop four or five minutes and not have to do anything yeah. Not have to be a personal growth professional, you yeah. know. <laughs> Not have to be a master guitarist. Just stop and just chill out, and that, that's as simple as it is. But it's the truth, hmm. you know. That's and that's good. that's how I would do it, and yeah. then get on to playing music, because uh, especially in a, if you're chasing it in a professional sense, mm-hmm. that that kind of chasing uh, or the stresses about trying to do it professionally can overpower the joy of just playing music. And uh, if, if you can realize that, then the music will actually bring you out of that state most times. Yeah, I like that. That's good. Mm. Does that make sense? That sounds great. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. I, I have one more question. Um, just with regards to resources like out there that you would recommend, um, just with regards to either becoming a better player, because you go online, you type, I want to be a better guitar player, apart from buying your book, of course. What would be like the, the um, what would be like the, the one of the best resources out there that has helped you? Would it be like a magazine or a website or a YouTube guy or? Okay, and not not to not to kind of mention the book overly. No, but well, that's, that's why it's here. But it is <laughs> something that I say in the book mm. is to learn from all resources. So even yeah. even in there, it's me teaching, of course. Mm-hmm. But I say don't just learn from me. Yeah, uh, learn from everywhere. Mm-hmm. So mm. you might find, okay. you know, instructional video. It's all you can learn because people say I'm a kinesthetic listener or I, I like visual things. But truth is, you can learn all all different ways. Absolutely. So um, it pays to listen to things, to watch different things, to you know, and it sure beats watching the news. But that's a whole other topic. Um, so I I would say it's a matter of getting online, uh, or to a local teacher, someone in person. Who can guide you with that? Yeah. Um, and then just sticking to what is working for you. Just it's just being aware. It's like everything, you know. It's being aware of what's going on, and um, you listen to your. I, I call it your practice conscience. So if if in your mind you're going, I shouldn't really be following this direction, mm-hmm. then don't. 
Yeah. You know, or if if you if your kind of intuition tells you that this person's a good teacher or uh, they're coming from a genuine place, you can learn a lot. Then that might be the path to go down. Um, but yeah, th- so that's what I would say is, is try a few different teachers. You know, I and do. of course, I've certainly got a lot of stuff online that you can check out because. That's what I do. That's right. what I've dedicated right. my life to. So, <laughs> so, so where can we find out more about you and what you got going on? Cool. Well, yeah, you can check it out. Just ryan-kershaw.com. How do you spell Kershaw? Uh, K-E-R-S-H-A-W. Great. So you even yeah. pronounced it wrong there. Good thing you asked. Yeah, I do exactly. have the time. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. That's great. Ryan, thank you so yeah. much for being here. We really appreciate you having me. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. 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 No couple of weeks or whatever and it's really yeah. it's really exciting to have our first in-person interview yeah I well, think we uh-huh. nailed it go team <laughs> go team <laughs> thanks very much Ryan awesome that was our interview with uh, teacher I th- I'd love to find out what he how he basically musical entrepreneur him. musical entrepreneur <laughs> life coach, guitar player, uh, Ryan Kershaw. Um, it was really fun. I really enjoyed yeah, doing that. Yeah, it was really nice to meet him. It was great for him to come on down. So Yeah, he uh, showed us his new book, uh, How to Make Money Teaching Guitar, I think, was it? Yeah, yeah. That's Gotta get not me a copy. Yet, no, but yeah. we, we were very lucky to get a, get a copy of it. Sneak peek. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I really appreciated this idea of kind of, really it's, it's a gratitude mindset of mm. being thankful for like the opportunity to sit down and be creative in the first place. Absolutely. Uh, you know, things may not be working out in your life exactly like you want, but you know, the fact that you have a guitar and you have the time to sit down and do this, like that's a step in the and right you have direction. Hands. Not you, everyone has hands. <laughs> right. Like the YouTube guy. With yeah. His toes. He makes it work. Yeah, exactly. But it, I'm sure that guy's, if you look at the videos for him, he's grateful that he's playing guitar. Yeah. Even absolutely. with toes. So yeah, there you go. It's a, um, yeah, it's, it's just such a, it's such a cool kind of Venn diagram of guitar instruction and, you know, becoming a better individual. Yeah. And I really like how he's kind of, he's gotten that, uh, that kind of that corner That middle down. ground. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a good, good example of skill stacking. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So moving on to what we've been listening to. So, or what we've been working on. Yeah. How about what we've been working on? Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah. Uh, John, <laughs> we have this written down somewhere. I, I think I... I dropped somewhere in somewhere. the show notes. Somewhere in the show notes. All right. Uh, John, can you talk to us about what you've been... What you've been uh, about? Yeah, absolutely. So, kind of nerd time here, but... Uh, nerd I've been time from you. I know. Kel Who Supreze. would have thought... Uh, new ways for me to use the altered scale. So that's new ways for me, not necessarily new ways for you or any of you jazz nerds who might be listening to this. You all know the altered scale and you all know how it works and where it goes. Great. Same here. But the point is, like, what other context can I use this in? And that's kind of what I wanted to explore. Um, so for those of you who don't know, the altered scale is essentially goes one and then it's a flat two, a sharp two, or nine if you're into the jazz thing, three, uh, flat five, sharp five, and then a flat seven. That's very altered, John. Yeah, it's very altered. So the idea is it goes over um, any sort of altered chord, uh, which would be like a flat 13 chord or something like that. Um, And usually over one of those dominant chords, like in a two, five, one, in the case of a minor. Um, Super nerd talk. That is super nerd. We'll leave it there. But anyway, just kind of playing around with that um, and seeing where else I can use it, where else it goes, how to play it, um, different techniques. So in the past, I've talked about, you know, Alan Holdsworth. uh, He's got some great examples of kind of some awesome legato licks using the scale. Um, Of course, you know, all the nerdy gent bands are going to use this. Animals as leaders use it. Periphery uses it, et cetera, et cetera. So um, there's a lot of different ways to play it. And a lot of different things to look at. And so I was like, I'll spend some time being more familiar with it and more familiar in the ways I can use it. So cool, man. What about yourself? Sounds great. Uh, oh, I've been working on a few things. Mm. Uh, just I, I, string skipping is a big thing for me that I kind of want to get down. It's, it's one thing Paul Gilbert has some really cool exercises on that. So yes, he does. Great. Any uh, artists that you would recommend for me to improve my string skipping? String ability? skipping. There's uh, one of my favorite exercises to work on string skipping is actually in the intro from Cliffs of Dover. Cool. Yeah. It's a really musical example as well. Yeah, it is. He climbs up the scale, um, or he climbs up the fretboard rather, 
using these big um just their their basic chord shapes is, yeah. is what they are um and a couple of inversions as he goes up and it's right there in the middle of that intro and it's a good it's a good example you got to go back to that man uh petrucci's got some good exercises as well for string skipping cool so yeah that's i that's one of the, my favorite exercises to work on so, great i'll definitely yeah. definitely check that out and what what have you been listening to Okay, so the Aristocrats. This is ah, the Guthrie Govan's supergroup. Yeah, essentially, essentially. Uh, and their album Tres Caballeros. Caballeros. Yeros. Yeah, okay, with the, the rolling of the R. You and your fantastic Spanish. Sharpen your guitar. Yeah. <laughs> What what is the word? What's what's X? And Spanish? I don't know. Oh Should come know. on! You let me down. You broke it's not my heart, really Dylan Murphy. Language. Oh. Go on, tell me. Govan and Co. Yeah, exactly. Um, so this this is their album from 2015. And um, when are you guys going to come out with more material? Come on. Uh, and a tour to boot. Like, we all need to see these guys on the road more. So Yeah. Um, but if you don't know Guthrie Govan... Uh, Have you ever seen him in any forum before playing no i haven't unfortunately he seems like such a nice guy he's just yeah he's super casual i studied with um uh, someone who'd played with him a couple of times and she's she said like he's nicest guy in the world uh, but he is like so locked into guitar all the time yeah you have a mug that says it looks like i'm listening to you but actually, I'm playing guitar in my I head. I do have that mug. Yeah, and Thank apparently that opinion. is that is Guthrie Govan, like, all the time. Oh, he's yeah. not engaged with you at all. <laughs> he's playing a guitar, like, in his head. That's so <laughs> unsettling. <laughs> yeah. <a little> bit. <laughs> and if you watch some of the videos you, uh, of him on YouTube, you can kind of, like, you can kind of see that mentality. That's like, where his brain goes. Yeah, he's, he's showing you a lick, but his brain is already, like, four minutes <laughs> elsewhere <laughs> playing a different lick. Four so, minutes into the lick. Yeah. Exactly. And what about you? What is interesting and new in your ears? Well, John, as, as you know, I am a big advocate of uh, Spot Prem or Spotify Premium, as uh, you might say. Yes. And one of the things I really like about Spotify now, I know it's killing the music industry and whatever. Me, 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 me. But they're, I, uh, I don't, they, what they I do don't is they have these. Um, this is playlists. Now, I found that, okay, getting a greatest hits album is, is fine. But if you want something with a bit more meat, uh, Spotify does these. This is so. Uh, there's like I I found that this is Tom Waits playlist, which is really really nice oh, to have. Really? But the one I've really been looking at is that this is Joe Bonamassa. Uh, oh, one, interesting. Which is really interesting because it's got that lots guy of creates so much stinking music. He does. It's and amazing. Like he's got super groups and he's got guest spots and he's got live albums. I think he was in like the Albert Hall. So this is a really nice kind right. of collection. Of everything, and it's 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 a playlist, so it gets updated on a regular basis. So you're wow. not going to get the same thing every time. So yeah, I think it's really really good. Excellent. He's a crazy player. Not mad about yeah. the singing. Yeah, yeah, I've never been overly impressed with it, but you know, again, like as a guitar player. Yeah, it's it's yeah. yeah you're not listening to this guy for the deep lyrical content. You're listening right. To this for the the how many notes can he burst into. You know, into a his bar, a blues, blues playing. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful. I saw him a few years ago. I was saying, I'm telling you before, and he is just a, a beast, a beast of a guitar player. Excellent. Cool. I think that's all we got time for today, John. Yeah, I think so. Good so episode. this has been episode ten. All ten of them. Episode ten. We've now raised more episodes than there have been Star Wars films. Mm, Fast that's and right. Furious Take films. that, George Lucas. Take just it. barely on the on the Fast and the Furious movies. Yeah, we just did. They're at eight. So. Oh. <laughs> As long as we... They're going to catch up. <laughs> Probably by next week. At this rate, <laughs> with The Rock. Uh, yeah, that's all we got time for today. Anyway. Friends, stay sharp. <laughs>